the book of Mark chapter 4. Good to see you, Taylor. Amen, amen. Amen. Good to have Brother Julius back in the house. Amen. amen. Mark chapter 4, and let's look at verses 38 and 39. Mark chapter 4, verse 38 and 39. When you have it, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. This is what the word of God says, King James. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Hallelujah. Just for a minute, our topic is God is still in control. God is still in control. Look to somebody you don't like and tell them God is still in control. I hope you couldn't find nobody. Now look to somebody you love and tell them God is still in control. God is still in control. God is in control. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to thank God for blessing us to just be in the house of prayer one more time. I'm all excited and fired up, y'all. I don't know about you, but I am. I'm excited. I'm fired up because God is still in control. And I'm looking forward to this evening. I can't wait to see our mind ministry go forth today. This is a day of celebration. Three years God has blessed them to minister for the Lord. And we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Anybody going to come along with me today? Don't let me leave you today now because I'm read up. I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. You see, God is still in control of things. And, you know, I know that we've had a lot of devastation. This has been one of the most devastating years for our nation. Every time you turn the TV on, the radio on, you go on the Internet, you're going to find some bad news. We find bad news from the White House to the outhouse. We find bad news in the church house. We find bad news in the community. We find bad news on the job. Everywhere we look, there is bad news. But I came to tell you today that God is still in control. And we can't hang our heads down and begin to wimp like little crybabies. We got to stand up, stand up, and know that God is still in control. I am very acutely aware that Satan can't do nothing unless God allows him to do it. Can't give you a cold unless God allows him to do it. Can't do nothing unless God allows him to do it. And our ways are not God's ways and we've got to get to the point people where we do more than just read scriptures. We are one of the most read churches in Jackson. But we don't believe the word that we are reading. Because if we did, when things happen, we would know what the word of God says. And instead of getting all worked up and bothered about it, we would just say, Lord, have mercy. I know you're still in control. God's been too good to us for us to doubt him now been too good to us for us to doubt him now. Look what God has done for you. I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about you. Every last one of you, if you would just tell the truth about it, you would have to testify of God's goodness. I know of testimonies that you sitting on. I know about them. But we drag into the house of prayer. Now, Lord, help us, Lord Jesus. 
we come in here all down and out and 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 when is it that the people of God are gonna really enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and that's not just on good days that's not not just when the sun is shining that's not just when you feel like it but it's because you are in the presence of the Lord the king of kings when you come into his presence the least that we can give him is praise That's the least we can give him. Amen. The scripture was read earlier. Psalms 104, 1 through 9. And down around the ninth verse, oh, yeah. it really caught my attention. The psalmist says, thou hast set a bound yes, thank you, Lord. or a boundary. In, in other words, he has drawn the line. Yes, 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 yes. Lord, have mercy. Thank God that he has drawn the line yes, for yes. us in our lives. In, in, in other words, when, when God draws a line, he says, ain't nobody or nothing going to cross that line. And no matter how much the devil rages and how much he tries to destroy, he has a boundary that he has set in our life. Oh, ask Job about it. Satan wanted to take him out, but God had drawn the line and he said, look, you can do this and you can do that, but don't you take his life. God draws the line in our lives and he will just let the devil do just so much, but he can't go past that. That boundary. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God for it because He's got boundaries all around me. I see enemies rising up all around me. I see the devil attacking all around me, but he just can't get but so close. And then God says, No, that's enough. That's enough. That's as far as you can go. That's all you can do. David understood that. Even Saul was trying to take his life. God had drawn a line. He couldn't cross that line. And here the psalmist is talking about even the seas have to obey the boundaries that God has put down and, and he's put sands and he's put beaches and he's put mountains and he's put all kinds of boundaries around the sea and the sea can't even go across those boundaries unless God gives the sea permission to do so. You know, that doesn't mean that the sea doesn't keep trying. That doesn't mean that the devil doesn't keep trying. That doesn't mean that we won't have new towns to come up, situations. That don't, doesn't mean that we won't have columbines and all of that. All of those things are going to come, but even in those tragedies, God has drawn a line. He's drawn a line. The waters have a natural propensity to return back and cover the earth just like it did in the beginning. This world was covered with water until God drew the line, the water was everywhere. And then God said, no water, you back up and there's going to be a sea over here. There's going to be an ocean right here. There are going to be rivers and there are going to be streams and that's where you stay and you stay in your place until I change it. But oh, the water still try to rise. They, they still try to overflow. They try to overtake you. Let, let me tell you what I'm, what I'm talking about. There are circumstances in your life that come like a flood. And oftentimes you feel overwhelmed that even that they are going to take you out. But we've got to learn how to go to God and say, Lord, 
please draw that line in my life. Don't let this thing overtake me. Lord, I am your child. Protect me. Preserve me. Uphold me, Lord. I'm just trying to do your will. Don't let me down. Instead of claiming defeat, we got to claim victory. God is still in control. Over in Revelation chapter 7, beginning at verse 1, the Bible says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. You see, I don't worry when people tell me bad things that are going on. And it seems like it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Those of us that study and know the word of God know that these things must happen. Hello, somebody. Instead of us whining and complaining, we ought to stand up and say God's will and his word is being fulfilled. Oh, my heart aches for those parents that have lost their children and lost their loved ones. My heart aches for them. But what we are seeing is the result of sin. Oh no, they perhaps had not committed sins. But all the way back to the garden, we are paying the price for sin. We're paying the price. And God's word is true. If it didn't happen, God would be a liar. And my Bible tells me that God cannot lie. What has uttered out of his mouth, it shall come to pass. And I realize that those situations have been prophesied in the word of God. And there is a sealing that is taking place. You see, we are between the sixth plague. Hello, somebody. And the seventh plague. We are in the gap right now. And the four angels are standing on the four corners of the world ready to allow the winds of wrath to blow upon this earth. But God is saying, wait just a minute. I still got some folk that need to be sealed. They need to hear my word. They need to accept me as their savior. And I'm waiting on turning point to do what turning point is supposed to do to help them to know me as their savior. I, I, I got some folk to seal. And this seal is in their forehead. The, the seal in your forehead is something that everybody will recognize. Or you won't be a, one of those uh, closet uh, praiser and closet uh, worshipers of the Lord. I'm talking about folk that will live the standards of God out in the public. 
I, I'm talking about folk that won't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, won't be ashamed to keep his commandments, won't be ashamed to be a witness for the Lord. You put something on somebody's forehead, it's going to be noticed. Yeah, yeah. Amen. It's going to be noticed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this seal is one that's going to make us stand out even more. Because we have been committed. Committed to do this work for the Lord. Yeah. To obey the Lord. Yeah. Every last one of his commandments. And we have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yeah. says no I, I i i i can't let you let your winds blow or we get a little breeze every now and then amen a little breeze comes through every now and then just to remind us that the big wind is coming hallelujah oh you know how it is when a little wind comes sometimes you might notice it sometimes you might not but god is sending us little instant messages to let us know that there is a great devastation that is headed this way and the people of God must be sealed before he allows the wrath to come. Let me tell you about the importance of the seal of God. You remember when and when Israel was over in Egypt and God was about to destroy all the firstborn of the land and 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 God said, "Look, I need you to put hallelujah, a little blood on the doorpost and wherever I Wherever I see that blood, my angel of death and my angel of destruction will pass by your house and, and you will be spared of the wrath of God. Well, thank God for the seal in the latter day because that seal will let the angels know that we are on the Lord's side and we will be protected in the last day. You might not want to be sealed, but I want to be sealed. Lord, Lord, slap me on my head right now and let me, Lord, have your Holy Ghost anointing over my life. I don't mind being a witness for you. I don't mind letting the world know whose side I'm on. And I don't care what the devil brings my way. He can bring death my way. He can bring poverty my way. Whatever he wants to send my way, that's all right with me because I know God has something better for me. He's got something better for me. He's got something better. Hallelujah. And I thank God that he's not only still in control, but Jesus cares. Somebody ought to just shout out right there. Jesus cares. He cares. Oh, sometimes it might not seem like he cares. Sometimes he's asleep in the boat. Oh, yeah. Sometimes he's asleep in the boat and got him a pillar and got real comfortable in the boat. And, and, and the waves are, are, are dashing and, and, and the wind is blowing and, and it seems like all is lost and somebody cries out, Jesus, Jesus. do you care? Yeah. Jesus. Oh, I'm so glad my Jesus cares. And I'm glad that God is in control. The disciples, they were in the boat and they were struggling trying to keep the water out of the boat and there was Jesus sleeping through the storm hallelujah and then somebody realized look we're struggling here we're struggling here and we got the master in the boat and he's asleep see some of us are trying to fight battles that God will fight for us some of us trying to get victories that Jesus has already won. We just need to go over to Jesus and nudge him a little bit by faith and say, Lord, I know that you are able to do something about this situation. Lord, won't you just move? 
Lord, won't you just move? Somebody ought to say it with me now. Lord, won't you just move? Move in my situation right now. I need a breakthrough right now. The waves are about to come in my boat and I don't know how I'm going to make it. But Lord, if you would just move. Thank God that Jesus, he's not so far away that he doesn't hear our cries. He's not so insensitive that he's not moved by our circumstances. And the Bible says that when they woke him up, he just looked around. He just looked around and assessed the situation. And he spoke three words. Peace. Be. Still. Peace be still. And I want you to know those words still have power. Even today, even in your flood situation, even in your high water situation, even in the turbulent times that you're going through. Jesus! 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 He can still speak peace. Be still in your life. And the word says that the waters and the waves and the sea and the wind even obeyed his voice. Your bills will obey his voice. Your health will obey his voice. Your children will obey his voice. Peace. Be still. Give God some praise.
Lord, thank you, Lord. Stand to your feet and let's thank God. Let's thank God.